from one show that was one movie that was just not so good to, to a bunch of things I like, and that's boys. Oh, uh, just the boys season two. What a season it was! Oh, wow. Yes. That uh, yeah, the boys is say fucking it, awesome. It felt a little bit like a filler season. Yeah. Just to point this out. I do enjoy the fact that they hit both sides of the fence because there was a question out there. A lot of the other sites like Critical Drinker and uh, Nerdrotic and some of the other guys that I'm a fan of were all kind of pointing to, did the, did the boys go woke? But I think they skewered both sides fair enough. Um, even World Class Bullshitters talked about this, and he actually has a, fina- uh, a fantastic breakdown of something that I'm going to break down as well because... I didn't listen to everybody's breakdown of the boys so that I could come with my own fresh opinion. I'm gonna, but I'm going to say I'm, I'm gonna, it, it covered both sides of the board. It secured everybody. I'm going to argue off the top of that and say, no, this was not a filler season. They absolutely answered questions. They continued with another story and then answered that story and then wrapped it up in a way that they can then go into season three comfortably without making okay. me feel wanting for more. Easy question then, Scott. What's the plot of season two? The plot season two is Stormfront's entrance into and trying to mm, it's one entertain, word. entertain her manifest destiny. There's one word, and the plot is Nazis. And that's my point. Is so, and Stormfront leaves. Okay, spoilers, everybody. We're we're, we're going to totally it's, spoil gonna this do because it. it's Here extremely it important that we talk spoilers. about something. Spoilers. Oh wait, that's not what I wanted. Hold on. Hello. No, that's that. Spoilers. Spoilers. Damn it! I don't care anymore. Spoilers. Spoilers. It's gonna be spoiled. There, spoilers. <laughs> you spoiled it. But okay, so let me point this out. So if you go from Alpha to Omega with Stormfront, and Stormfront arrives and Stormfront leaves, and you take that out of it, what's the plot of the what's the plot of season two? Mm, uh, Homelander. Oh, Is yeah, there any definitely, character development no, in any of the Homelander? Any of the definitely, definitely continuation of Homelander's story. Absolutely a uh, more the deep. So uh, what what ha- what what uh, is Homelander's plot then? The him going into a fucking psychosis? Yeah, his son, him going that much further off of the edge. He starts out, I mean, he starts out season two already mentally fucked and then at the end of season two he is completely off the bridge and shooting right into the river so he's more off the bridge before or after he murders an entire plane full of people no but plane through people was just an evil move it wasn't off the bridge he's not losing his mind the the plane full of people was him just being an evil douchebag the end of season two where now he is a very dangerous and very like live hand grenade style character that this guy's going this guy this guy's going to explode more dangerous how is that any more or less dangerous than season one you take a guy with a gun and he goes into a room and decides that i'm going to kill everybody in this room that's one kind of crazy you take a guy with a gun and decide that he can't see and he's going to randomly shoot around because he doesn't give a flying fuck and he can just go off the hinge at any time and also (laughs) give him a hand grenade and say you can toss this as well that's what he is now he is completely out of control off the hinges anything's going to make him snap and his friends his enemies the innocent the world he murdered the the woman he loved at the end of season one how much more unhinged would you like him to be he the i mean he's pretty i'm just pointing it out i'm not saying it was a bad season on I'm, i'm not saying that i'm just saying it felt like a filler season because nothing was accomplished lamplighter a new character that's introduced gone no one had the same thing with the will she won't she with the whole Huey and no, Starlight. No, they pretty much. It's not necessarily resolved. Yeah, that's we don't yeah, learn anything well more about Black Noir. A Train is right back where he was. The Deep is in the same shit it, shit it, place he was before. It was a character study season. Okay, that's fair. I will I will grant you that you got to study some of the and even and even and even the deep the and even the deep and A train their stories continued on. They may have wound up where they were, but they still were able to fill it up. But when you're talking about like continuing the story along, the son, the boys, um, MM was able How to get back to his the mystery of vault. Uh, vault. Yeah, the vault was more uncovered. There was a lot more of vault uncovered. The head floater. I just think it's it's a little lame to go with Nazis is such like the most generic 
I was glad they didn't go full. Like, they kind of nipped it in the bud. Like, she introduced it a couple episodes before the finale, and then it just kind of, like, it was done. Yeah. So, I, and, it wasn't, and my only it point wasn't a is, full storyline, but that wasn't that also part of the original Stormfront storyline from the comics as well? It is. It is. But they've, they've veered enough away from the comics where I don't think that that's necessarily important. I think what I would find more interesting is the point at which Homelander no longer cares about public opinion and just decides to introduce himself as a god. He's already said it several times. At what point does he just decide to just, just take over the world on his own? What, They're setting that wait, up. Wait, wait, what show are you watching? Because the whole true. the whole reason the show ended the way it did was because Homelander loves his public opinion. When Maeve held up the phone and said the world would know this and no one will cheer your name again, and they had all the voices cheering Homelander, he absolutely adores the public opinion and he wants the people to worship him. What, I understand what show it, are you watching? It, he needs to be. He can just force everyone to worship him, Scott. It's not that difficult. He's a god. No, he knows. He knows that doesn't happen either. Because when they had the halfway through the season, when he he killed the 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 civilian in the other country, and everyone started to turn against him, he knows that that's not possible. Fear worship is just. And the, my point is, at some point, he's going to have to learn that fear worship is just as good as public adoration, which is fickle and nonsense. I'm just saying they picked a really lame villain as the like Nazis. It's just so tro like such a lame trope, like just to go back to. And, you know, again, it was great. I thought it was a great season. I just felt like it was spinning its wheels. Like it didn't, nothing moved forward. Nothing changed. Regardless of anything, you could watch it just for Homelander's performance because yes, Anthony Starr is, is fan fucking Star tastic. Anthony Starr is a phenomenal actor. He's somebody I will just watch. Ju I will watch other movies and other television shows just to catch Anthony Starr now. And definitely make sure you awesome. check out the boys, the after show on Amazon as well, hosted by Asia Tyler. I still have to watch the very last one. Apparently someone shows up and, and has some fun with them. But Anthony Starr, without the, that's a wig, spoiler, without that looks nothing like he does as Homelander, which is something, oh, no, nothing. Looks nothing which like is something he adores because he's like, I can go in public and no one is hating on me, which I'm glad because I'm playing such a repulsive character. He doesn't look, yeah, he looks nothing like, there are some just, the best part of the boys is their ability to shock you with every episode. There's scenes where you're just like, oh my God, what is going on here? Like when Homelander and uh, he, he has the, all those scenes with um, the doppelganger character who's who, who pretends to oh, be. Oh yeah, that was fun. Those I are will so suck amazing. You dry. It, it, it's just awesome. Um, the one thing the I whale. Give them I think huge. I think the whale was a funny. Oh my god, that the was whale was great. The whale was the amazing. The deep is just a joke. The deep is amazing as as a joke. What I want to point out though that does make a lot of sense though is something that they set up that they did better than the MCU and. Um, I will say world-class bullshitters did talk a little bit about this, but I had already thought about it when I saw it. Because they already make fun of the Justice League. They make fun of Batman versus Superman because they're filming a movie inside of the film. Yeah, Dawn of the Seven or Dawn something. Dawn of the Seven. And there's there's a whole thing about... Um, Joss what, Whedon. The women, right? The, what, what is it? Uh, the women get... No, girl power or yeah. yeah which was just, just the last episode uh, which is another look into Homelander and how how demented he is because as a way to fuck with Maeve he makes a whole movie just to fuck with her like this is this is a sort level of dimension of. that takes a it's not easy yeah but it's the marketing department that goes she, you know she's she says she's bisexual because they show her you know having sex with a couple guys and then they go you'd actually play better as a full-on lesbian, like we want you just and that's lesbian. and that's Being bisexual and that's, breaks that illusion. And that's after Homelander outs her and then proceeds to make a movie where she has to say all these horrible lines about how I'm gay and I'm proud of that. And da, 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 da. Yeah, it's Mave the Mave meals that are out and proud. Oh yeah, but there's funny. there's a point where they talk about um, girls get it done. Right is the campaign. Oh, that's right. Girls get it done. Yeah. yeah. And the the final climax, which you compare. That's an to interesting Endgame, word you just used. <laughs> girls get it done. No, no, oh, no. They the, can get the, themselves the done. Climax. climax. Taking the climax. Yes. Girls can take themselves a climax. Yes. Yes. That's but how they get it done. Okay. Well, think about though the in Endgame where they have the the she's got it moment. I think is what they call it. Is that oh, what they call the, it? Or the, she's the, got your the, back. Yeah. The girl power. 
Yeah, where a bunch of random women who've never met each other have to get together to protect the gauntlet. And was also like, that was also yeah, that was also a throw over to the there was a comic series about that where all the the women of Marvel get together and join their own group, right? Okay, except for this is twenty years of the MCU and none of them had ever met each other. So the point is, it was shoehorned in, right? I don't. I just felt like it was a moment in the movie that took me out of the movie that goes, "Oh, look what they're doing here! They're putting all the women together. Huh? That's a thing." In the boys, they set it up from the beginning that the women had like, so the boys themselves do not have superpowers, except Kamiko, right? Correct. She's like Wolverine. She's the only one who has powers. She's, yeah, like the Wolverine of the group. And when they're fighting Stormfront at the end, the boys would have gotten murdered on their own, except Maeve and Starlight and Kamiko, the only powered people, get together and beat her up. And I think it's a, it's, it's an interesting story for Starlight because Starlight's never been a... She, she was a, a street-level superhero stopping street-level crime. The superheroes don't have supervillains. That's something that Homelander created in order to give himself an opponent, right? So Starlight's never really fought soups before. So she's fighting Stormfront, essentially, for the first time. She did fight uh, A-Train, but that was kind of different. And, right? I, and I would argue that's actually a continuation of the story and not why right, this is a filler season, because now heading into the next season, you have Stormfront and Maeve, who are part of Seven, not because they want to be, but they have to be, who are every day living their life in fear or starlight starlight i'm sorry who are now every day living their life in fear of homelander and and it takes this new dichotomy to a new level well we don't know that they're still gonna be in the seven so anyway they go on to also kamiko is scared of stormfront but when she's backed up by the others and cornered and has to protect her friends she's willing to risk herself right to go attack them because she knows she can't die well, she doesn't. We know. We, well, now we now that, know that because no one broke her I, I neck suppose. up until that point. And then you know, Maeve gets her her opportunity to confront Stormfront. So I just thought it was a cool moment where it's like, oh look, they're doing what the Avengers did, but they actually made sense of it, and they did it in a natural way where they actually wrote the story where they all interacted. Starlight tried to recruit Maeve before Maeve turned her down, and they had a a relationship that was rocky that didn't really work where Maeve was like, I don't give a shit about what you do. I just thought they did it in a really, really smart way versus the Avengers where they're just like, let's jam these people together. We've never seen, um, uh, what's the, the female Iron well, Man? You, I you also, you, Iron Maiden. Is. It's also no, the no, same no. setup where the Avengers pretty much did this where they had how many, what was it? 21 or 24 mm. movies. I think it was, uh-huh, it was basically movies. an episodic movie, and that's what they did with this, where they had two seasons. They had so many episodes to uh, introduce and build these characters up and bring in this story. It was the same thing, tat for tat. What's Tony Stark's girlfriend? As, uh, as, aside, aside, from, Potts. aside from some small things, which were mostly about female empowerment, which for some reason Z has a problem with, there's, uh, you know, th- it, it, it no, was the same a problem thing where they were Captain just building Marvel, these characters never up. never met any of these characters before. She's never been to Wakanda. She's never met Pepper Potts. She's never met any of these people before, yet she's getting together with the girls and Valkyrie and everybody who's never not. It's None of those characters have enter, ever interacted with each other. I think, yet in the boys, well, they all naturally came together to do something. And I'm just saying that's the difference between good writing and shitty writing. What's interesting is that Z introduces this review as the boys season two is a filler season. And yet I didn't say it was a bad season. I said it was good. All of his arguments are reasons why this was not a filler season. And in fact, grew the story and moved it along. The overall plot did not move forward at all. Absolutely did. Did not one. There's not one thing you could tell me. You could have not had this season, and it's the same season. No. Other than the fact that Butcher's wife dies, there's nothing moves forward in this. Butcher's season. wife dies. He gives the kid back to the CIA. It's as if it never happened. No, the kid was never with the CIA in the first place. The yes, kid, they were. The, he was protected by the CIA no, in that little the stupid Vought dome. Kid was with Vought. 
Vaught, who cares? It doesn't matter. Vaught, if the CIA has him or Vaught has but him, it now, matter. But now it's irrelevant. the CIA has the kid, which is now a reason Vault is now going to panic. Vault had He's the kid from the very start. Either way. No, Vault had the kid the whole time. That was their thing against Homelander. Basic now writing, CIA has Scott. the kid. Now, the kid's been fridged. Now Vault has a problem because the CIA has the kid now. Homelander has a problem because Vault doesn't even have the kid now. So now Homelander can't find the kid at all. Uh, it, it was absolutely a continuation fridged, of the God. story. It wasn't it's a called, filler it's season. Called, it's called writing. The kid's been fridged twice. It's a fantastic season. And it's I, a good season. I don't yeah. have a problem with the season. I'm just saying it did not move the overall. I think it absolutely did. It, it, it doesn't matter. It, it, enhanced, has it enhanced everything. It makes the, 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 uh, the things, the things that the people are afraid of. Things happen that, that much Scott stronger. clearly can articulate. Scott likes the things and Scott they happen. Scott likes things. Things happen. Scott articulates. Yes. And there's white people. Scott loves white people. So many. So many, but everyone loves season two compared to season one. So the Rotten Tomatoes. Wow, that's a huge difference. Eighty-four yeah, percent season one, ninety-seven percent season two. Wow. So everyone I season loves. Season one was just more impactful, but everyone yeah. loves season two. Season two was great. I do not have an issue with it. And season three is going to begin filming sometime in early twenty twenty one. Dude, I think. they're going to sign them up for like four more seasons. Season four is I already think greenlit. Four is already confirmed. It is, so. It's going to be dope. I'm just a little disappointed that they didn't give you that giant black noir <laughs> reveal. Hopefully it's coming. You'll it's see possible. It that, and that's and there's so many questions. Apparently black noir is in a coma, so he's not dead yet. Stormfront, we're not sure what her status is dead. right now. That's still up in the air. We're not sure what her status they is. They said she's not dead. They said she's in a holding cell. Yep. And and what uh, and what future does it hold for the other characters? Uh, I think that I'm looking forward to it. The head popper. Uh, yeah, Who's, uh, that was kind of funny turning a AO, their AOC spoof character into the head. The head that was that. Yeah, that was that was a twist right there. That was impressive. I guess they just never set it up from season one to season two. But whatever. <laughs> it's fine. It's cool. Uh, just I like think... they added Giancarlo Esposito for what reason? I don't know. He's just a great actor. He's cool. He's just cool. He's a great actor. I love, dude. Him and Anthony Starr in that one episode where, or no, him and Butcher in, the, in that one scene where it's uh, the two of them interacting together it was one of the best uh, acted scenes I've seen in a movie, in uh, or in a TV show in the past like three or four years. Like it was fantastic. Yeah. What what's that guy's name? Carl. Uh, what's the actor who does Butcher? Uh, Carl Sagan. Uh, Carl Urban. Carl Urban. Yes. Oh, yes Carl Urban. Urban was really good this season. He was really good before, but now he's really good. Scott also forgot my Watch intro. Watch the boys. Watch basically. it. It's, oh, wait, it's I the best show on television. I didn't forget your intro. You talked right through it. I had no chance. I talked through everything. Either way, watch The Boys. It was fantastic. Yes. Yes. We've talked too long. Let's end this Scott's er, er, uh, Noob Noob's bored. Yes. My mic fucked up somehow. I can only hear out of one ear. He wants to go sleepy time. I do. Did you check your plug, dummy? It's, I replugged it and it's still just one ear. My butthole. Maybe you just There's went... Maybe butthole. maybe your ear is like your eye where it's starting to sag to the one side. Oh, no. Oh, fuck so, you. So, if you like what you heard here this week, head on God, over so to rude. Instagram at orc underscore you. Check us out at facebook.com slash our reviews will kill you. And of course, if you don't watch us on YouTube, you can listen to us on Google Play oh, and Stitcher Jesus, and Spotify. Or you can watch us on youtube.com slash our reviews will kill you. And for those of you who listen to the audio podcast, we do love you. Please share this podcast with others. Let others know that you enjoy listening to us. We love it that you listen to our long-form podcast. We love doing it. We also do stream this live on YouTube. So what helps us is if you like, share, subscribe. The only way we can grow is if you help us break those algorithms and uh, move on to the next phase of, of our reviews will kill you. Uh, we're going to continue to give you great content, but thank you so much for listening. We do appreciate it. And from all of us here at Our Reviews Will Kill You to all of y'all at home, we love you. And on to the next one.